Wait, is that actually a thing? <gasps> oh my gosh, is this already a thing that we have? Because I, wow, maybe I'm behind. This is awesome. Hello, YouTube friends. Today I'm reacting to Technology Connections video on the popcorn button. I'm really excited about this one because I love popcorn. Not even kidding when I say that growing up, popcorn was my go-to back from school snack when I would get home. And I, I love popcorn. I think microwavable popcorn is one of the coolest things to hit the market. I love, I love pretty much everything about it. So I'm, I'm hoping to learn in this video and maybe be able to share some popcorn related insights. So let's jump in. Ooh. Lots of microwave ovens come with a dedicated button for popping microwave popcorn. Yet on nearly every bag of microwave popcorn sold in a store, you'll find a rather stern warning making it clear in no uncertain terms that that button is forbidden. Do not <laughs> use the popcorn button. This might make you question, why do we even have that button? And you know what? That's a great question. But I'm going to tell you something wild and devious. You should try it and see what happens. Try it. You know you want to. See, I got this question from a patron of the channel recently. Jolly Orville Secret Redenbacher Time II has a great incentive to tell you not to use the popcorn button. The popcorn producers of the world don't know anything about your microwave. And some microwave oven manufacturers are dirty little liars and put a popcorn button on microwaves that have no business having one. Oftentimes, that button doesn't do anything but set a pre-programmed cooking time. And if you use it, your popcorn will be either burnt to a crisp or hardly popped at all, with an approximately 0% chance of proper popping performance. Since nobody likes... Yeah, I feel like the average time of a microwave popcorn button is somewhere between like three and four minutes when the average bag of popcorn requires somewhere between a minute and a half to two and a half minutes. So there is a huge discrepancy between what the microwave popcorn buttons seem to be programmed to do and what we actually need them to do, when really all you need to do is actually listen for when your popcorn is done popping and then remove it. But I think a lot of people probably push that button, kind of walk away and expect the microwave to, to do its thing. And because it has a popcorn button, maybe in... Maybe it has ears and will hear when your popcorn is done popping and just stop for you. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, that's not how it works. And I feel like that should be intuitive as consumers. But then again, we are getting to a place with our technology where maybe we will get that advanced and have popcorn buttons that will stop when it's actually just right likes wasting popcorn, the popcorn people put a purportedly proper popcorn preparation primer on every package of popcorn, which usually involves that alliteration though. seconds between pops to signal it's done. And don't you ever use the popcorn button. Not in this family. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, but I need to make a correction. Of the brands shown here, Jolly Time stands out by not warning against using the popcorn button. As you're about to learn, this is actually a nice gesture because it means they trust you to use your brain and experiment. And that's the kind of hard-hitting investigative journalism you can expect from Technology Connections. As far as the rest of those brands, though, here's the secret they don't want you to know. Some microwaves are smarter than others and have sensors to determine when things are done cooking. Wait, is that actually a thing? Oh my gosh, is this already a thing that we have? Because I, wow, maybe I'm behind. This is awesome. What sort of sensor, you ask? Broadly, a microwave with proper popcorn popping prowess will have one or possibly two sensors on board. A moisture sensor, and if it's very fancy, a microphone. Microphones in microwaves are, I think, not super common, so you are more likely to just have a moisture sensor, but don't underestimate the power of moistness. With a bit of logic, that is so cool because with moistness, in theory, like a lot of the things that you can, so not popcorn bags, but you pop your popcorn in the microwave in 
those special bowls or whatever that they've designed to go in the microwave and still pop your popcorn, I think that should still apply to this if it's just detecting moisture. So that's really cool and I kind of want to try all of this now. One way to tell whether you have that sensor is if your microwave offers functions like sensor reheat, which if it does, you should give that a try next time you're reheating leftovers. It has worked surprisingly well in my experience. What a microwave oven is doing when using that feature is analyzing the rise in detected moisture over time. More moisture indicates food is beginning to let off steam, and depending on how quickly that steam is detected, it can roughly determine how much food you put in and how cold it was, and thus how long it needs to heat it for. If you're lucky enough to have a moisture sensor in your microwave, you may very well have a decent popcorn button. See, unless you're getting it from Uncle Joe's discount cornhole, a bag of microwave popcorn will stay sealed when it begins to pop. Since it's sealed, the moisture sensor can't detect anything at first. But once the pressure in the bag builds past a certain point, the bag will either go boof or possibly <laughs> and let out a big old cloud of steam. The microwave will easily detect that, and by comparing the time it took between the start and the sudden moisture spike with a lookup table built into its programming, it will pretty accurately guess the size of the bag it's popping and how long it should keep cooking until it's done. If you've got a microwave like this, that popcorn button might work perfectly for most kinds and sizes of popcorn. Notice though that I said might and most. This Samsung microwave oven has a pretty decent popcorn button, but the location of its moisture sensor isn't the best. When you use its popcorn function, it fires up the fans for a few seconds to clear the air around the moisture sensor before switching on the magnetron. After a short delay, it begins cooking, and you can clearly see that the display doesn't say anything other than popcorn until shortly after the bag bursts open. Then it picks a time remaining value and stops cooking at the end. This works pretty well if the opening of the bag is pointing to the right when it bursts open. The sensor is clearly somewhere up in here, and if the steam gets shot right into this area, the microwave only takes a few seconds to pick a remaining cook time, and once it does, it's usually pretty bang on. But if the popcorn bag is pointing away from this region, it tends to take just a little too long to detect the moisture spike, so it thinks the bag is... That sounds like maybe a design flaw, <laughs> but oh my gosh, that is really funny. I think I've seen microwaves exactly like that, and I always wondered what that sensor was. Now we know. Bigger than it is, and it cooks just a little bit too long. Generally, it just singes a few kernels, but it's enough to be disappointing. A faster spinning turntable would be one potential solution here, or perhaps the microwave just isn't churning up the air inside of it well enough. But here's the thing. Despite not being perfect, I would still happily press that button. Because I've dared to use this microwave's popcorn button and observed its quirks, I learned that it beeps when it determines the remaining time, which is usually somewhere around 20 or 30 seconds. That gets my attention, so I get ready to stop the microwave. Sometimes I don't need to stop it early at all, other times I'll stop it with 5 or 10 seconds remaining. And if I'm popping one of those small snack bags, I stop it when it beeps. So while its popcorn button isn't perfect enough to just hit and walk away, it does eliminate enough of the guesswork when buying a different brand, type, flavor, or size of popcorn that I find it extremely useful. And I have indeed used microwaves with a perfect popcorn button, like the sharp carousel sitting in front of me. I made a whole video about this, which you can check out if you like, and if you're extremely bored, you can also look at the video on my <laughs> second channel where I audited its popcorn popping performance. Oh my gosh. A different microwave oven from my childhood also had a perfect popcorn button. Sadly, that one didn't last long at all, but it was great while it lasted. And wouldn't you know it, I want him to address popping popcorn in the microwave, but not in a microwavable bag. 
like not in those store-bought pre-packaged microwavable bags. I want him to focus on that and I don't know if he's going to get to it in this video. My new microwave oven at home has perhaps the best popcorn button I've ever used. But it's got a twist. Actually, two. I suspect that this fella has a microphone listening for popping sounds. Mm. That might sound pretty expensive to implement in a consumer device, but remember the video I just made on the clapper? Yeah, it's not exactly groundbreaking technology. Every time I have used the popcorn button on this microwave, it has run the magnetron until just after there's about a two second gap between pops, and then it decides, okay, it's done. It throws a time remaining on the screen, but you can tell that the magnetron has shut off and it doesn't restart. It has done this and worked perfectly with different sizes and types of popcorn, even a cheesy popcorn, which I absolutely regret purchasing. But I don't think I- Okay, but that sounds so brilliant. Like, I, I sometimes just stop my microwave and let it sit in there a while, you know, you'll get those few extra pops because you have kernels that are just on the verge of popping anyway. Um, but that is like built in to do this purposefully and the rotation would still just help with that heat transfer. So that is really, really cool. And I'm, I'm jealous of his microwave. I realize that the popcorn button function is not the most important thing in a microwave, but how awesome would it be to actually like I don't know, half one that works. I want to try mine again now. See, I have no idea if our microwave is smart or not. And now I need to know. I haven't paid enough attention to it. I've tried a snack size bag yet. How'd that work, future me? Went just fine past me. Could have gone a little longer, but it's not burned. Not too many kernels, actually. Good job. Unfortunately, I couldn't determine concretely whether this model actually has an acoustic popcorn popping strategy. The manual doesn't mention it, and neither does its marketing copy. It may be that its steam sensor is just really good, but I mean, it's been way too consistent with the whole wait for a two second pause between pops thing for me to call that a coincidence. What's that? There's a button on the website that says feature sheet under additional documents. Did I write all that before clicking that button? Because it says it features a sound-based popcorn function right there. So it is real. Good to know. The other twist with this microwave, though, is that it doesn't appear to cook popcorn at full power. It takes noticeably longer than the Samsung machine does, and indeed most microwaves I've ever used. But it doesn't have an inverter magnetron, and I don't hear it cycling. So unless it's got some sort of half-wave rectified 50% power mode, I don't know what the heck it's doing. You don't need to know what any of that means. This microwave is also weirdly slow at melting butter for some reason, but not at heating things in general. That's actually been something of a minor mystery that I'm still puzzled by, so I'm honestly not sure if the slow popcorn popping is intentional, but by golly, it nails it every time, so it's definitely worth the small added weight. So, I've technically shown you three microwaves in this video. This Sharp from the late 90s, the Samsung from around 2010, and the KitchenAid from just last year. All of them have perfectly functional popcorn buttons that work great, well enough to be useful, if not perfect, and fantastic, respectively. And the only way I found that out was by daring to use the popcorn button. <laughs> Uncle Orville may not Well, Let me know in the comments below if you have dared to use the popcorn button. And just to come to the defense of whoever has written all of these instructions, they're really just trying to protect themselves because you have to base your instructions off of the average consumer. So what they'll do is they'll often have consumers come in and test their products, show them how they use it. And in some cases, market researchers will go to their consumers and just observe them using their products in their household. And then they'll take note of what their consumers do. So if consumers were pressing the popcorn button and walking away and then getting upset that their popcorn was burnt, 
I imagine that is exactly what led to these sets of instructions that warn against using the popcorn button. Because if you don't have a fancy microwave that is sensing when to stop your popcorn appropriately, yeah, you're going to be upset as a consumer if you've walked away. Because you will have burnt popcorn, and that is very sad. Want us to press the button, but that's only out of fear of the unknown. Orville can't tell what microwave you've got, and he's just giving advice for the lowest common denominator. But you know what kind of microwave you have. Or, if you don't yet, you can surely find out. All it takes is a press of a button. At most, you'll waste a bag of popcorn. But even then, if you just watch it as it does its thing, you can stop it yourself if it's going on too long, or start it again if it stopped too soon. You're smart enough to figure that out, and you should. Honestly, you should check out all the features your microwave has. Sure, many of them are clunky to access. A high res dot matrix display and actual user interface could really help with that, but that ship has sailed apparently. And while they're often of dubious usefulness, at least one or two of them might be great. I use the sensor reheat function all the time to take the guesswork out of leftovers. I just wish Samsung wouldn't make me pick between casserole, dinner plate, and pasta. What does that even mean? And who knows, if you didn't buy the microwave oven you have at home yourself, it might have some tricks up its sleeve you didn't know about. This over-the-range microwave can actually be a convection oven. It's got resistive heating elements in addition to the magnetron, and will get its insides up to 450 degrees if you like. Apparently the new model even does air frying. Of course it does. Am I ever going to get around- Right? I feel like everything air fries these days. We got a Ninja Foodie a while ago, and it air fries. I mean, remarkably well, actually, but I feel like air frying came out of nowhere, and then it has taken over kitchen appliances. Well, thanks for watching this video. I had a blast reacting to it and learning some things about microwaves. I hope you guys did too. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have other videos you'd like me to react to in the future. And I'll see you next time.